Hey guys, it's Anne over at Plant Obsessed, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to continue on doing little mini harvests at the beginning of every feeding. So let me grab a bin. All right, so I'm just going to keep doing this to try and remove as much as I can to keep making room. It's a little bit damp. It's been raining here a lot. So as I told you before, you can't really sift a whole bunch when it's wet wet. This is that in between that will start to make little, little balls that are that shape if you're not careful. So I am trying to remember not to do it if it's going to, when it starts making that little ball up portion, then I know I have to stop. This also gives me a good opportunity to take out any plastic that might have been in any sort of like window that went through the shredder and get rid of it before it is final harvest time. So as you can see the, the castings are really nice and they probably do have a bit of um, cocoons in them here and there but I think you know that's okay. So I'll just do a couple handfuls from this end, and then call it a day, at least for the harvesting part. Damn it. So you can see the worms stay on, on this side, as does, uh, you know, squash seeds, etc. Yeah, if you haven't noticed, I took out the mango, took out the mango trees and planted them. All right. And I didn't watch the video again, so I'm not exactly sure where I fed. So we will have to look together. I strongly suspect it's in the middle. All right. There we go. You can always count on an avocado shell to be full of little worms. Now... One of these started kind of fluorescing, almost like an African nightcrawler. I wonder if that was a blue worm. I didn't know if they did that as well. If anybody in the comments below has seen their blue worms kind of fluoresce, um, yeah, let me know. That's cool. Um, that was one of the things that I always enjoyed about the African nightcrawlers was that they literally were fluorescent. Um, at least they were when they were big enough to really look at. Um, so, 
Yeah. It's cool, though. All right, we're getting to it now. Let's see, they've eaten all of that down to just the papery thin edge. So we're kind of getting a continuous worm ball here rather than one. Let's, let's maybe dig a little and see what I can find. Sometimes I'm good about remembering to watch the video ahead of time and other times not so much. So the tea bags, that string will eventually um, completely break down. So if you've wondered, um, that has been my experience is that ye old black tea bags do. Tivana tea bags are either made out of like silk or something that is resistant. And although they do degrade over time, it's on the order of years. All right, so it's just kind of like a a dispersed worm ball here. I do have a good size feeding for them, but we'll probably move ends so they can finish finish whatever they're eating here and uh, have fresh food at the other end. That is the. It's one of my overwintering pepper plants. I think this is all that is left of the t-shirt. I think they've got a little bit more to eat and then I think this thread is not cotton. I think it must be some synthetic blend because it seems to never go away. Here's one of the Tivana tea bags that's been here. I'm going to say at least a year. And it's just now starting to rip. So, if anybody knows what Tivana tea bags are made out of, let me know in the comments below. Alright, kind of just going through it. More string from the t-shirt. Jeez, how much string goes into making the hem of a t-shirt? Alright, well that's pretty good. We're getting a really nice... Oi! Oh man, I just... Dis oh. Okay, we're going to have to move closer. Alright. I think that was the mashed potatoes, wasn't it? That's a nice, nice worm ball. I thought we were just going to kind of get that high concentration of worms and not really get a worm ball. So I am pleased to see that we get a ginormous worm ball. I mean, that's probably a couple pounds of worms, you know, just eyeballing it. Three handfuls of worms. Mm, four handfuls of worms. And it is getting a little wet. So definitely going to switch where I feed. But yeah, that's, that's nice. So one astute uh, watcher asked me, what am I going to put into um, those blue bins? Well, I haven't exactly decided yet because I'm not done. I'm um, probably going to add more to that room. Uh, but I know what I'm going to at least do is take some of them from the big boy here and start putting them in breeder bins uh, to let them grow their population. Um, so that is one of the things that I'm going to do to expand the herd into the next room is I'm going to take some of these, which you can tell, I have some worms to spare currently. Um, and then basically, um, that will be one of the things that I do. I do have another plan to have more worms, which when I get around to it, I will make a video, so stay tuned. Okay, so let's move down to this end, where I'm pretty sure there is not any food or worms. 
and then I think this is where I will feed today. I will move all of the um, old food down here and then add the new food with some more bedding. Brought down, uh, I've been running low on my bedding down here. So I brought a five gallon bucket of the stuff that I make for the African night crawlers. I'm never running low on bedding for the African night crawlers because I know how they are. So let's see what I've got here. Making a nice, good, deep, deep hole. Uh oh. Seem to have found another. Must have broken through that hole in the bottom that I had clogged up. All right. Well, let me put some of the paper towel, and at least that'll clog it temporarily. It'll keep everybody from going through. Then put some bedding on there. Spread that out. This has been sitting for more than a week upstairs, so we can put the mashed potatoes we've gathered in there, spread them out so they can get mixed up with the rest. And we'll put the avocado bits down here, and then they will get their new feeding. All right, looks like some broccoli potatoes, onions, um, I don't know, spinach, cauliflower, carrots, radishes. So I, if I'm smart, I won't come in and look at this for two weeks because that is going to stink. So I'm going to cover that up really well. Um, that's kind of the trick with things that are stinky. It's not that the worms won't eat it. It's that as it degrades, if you don't cover it up really well, then um, your nose is going to be offended if you don't cover it up good enough to keep the smell out. So that is what my goal is here right now, is to cover it up with castings as well as with bedding so that um, it does not attract any unwelcome pests to my basement. All right, so let's take a look at what we've done here. Oh, can't even tell I did anything at all. So the big huge worm ball was here in the middle, and then we fed down here at this far end. Gave them about a, a gallon of food and about two gallons of bedding, which is kind of where I like to keep it. Um, you can see we have little roly polies. They're helping out with the process. I do see some mites, uh, little white mites. Not really seeing any of the uh, red mites, which I'm honestly not sure if those are the bad red mites that hurt your plants or not, but I usually get concerned if I see them. But I'm not really seeing them. I don't see any springtails. I just see a couple of the little lazy white mites that kind of putter around, or they might even be baby pill bugs. I don't know. All right, guys. Well, if you like the video, give it a muddy thumbs up. And if you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that bell icon. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out with me and my worms. And everybody, have a good day.